Okay, so welcome back. Thanks for coming back um, for the second workshop session. So we've already covered sort of the basics of SATA. Today we're going to do much more problem solving, hands-on work, and actually use SATA to leverage the data sets we already have and then to calculate um, some values, make some graphs, and do some other work with SATA. So the first thing to do um, is to notice that on SATA 10, I didn't notice this before, but there's a new feature on SATA 10 where you can select the working directory you're going to use. So let's do that before we do anything else. This, like the set memory command, is something you're going to want to do to um, customize the way you work with SATA and to centralize all your data files and keep them organized. So the first thing to do, uh, ignore this completely if you have SATA 9, because if you have SATA 9, this doesn't apply to you. It defaults to the directory in which your data set sits. But if you have SATA 10, like everybody else in the room, go to File and then Change Working Directory. You'll see a bunch of things pop up. As I instructed you last time and you created, you have a new data folder in your C drive um, or wherever you put it on a Mac. So you just click into your C drive, scroll down to the folder you want, and I believe I've told everyone to create a folder called QM Data. So if that's in your folder, if the name of the folder is Data, just click on that folder. Don't drop down any more levels, just on that folder and then hit OK. So what this means is whenever you output something from SATA, a graph, an output file, anything else, or you save a file automatically by default, save to this directory. Are there any questions about how to set this up? Um, this will be a permanent setting, so you won't have to revisit it unless you want to change your uh, directory or if um, you reinstall Stata or something like that. So today, we're going to work uh, with new files, natality data files. So um, if you look on handout page one, there are examples of where to go, the address of my website, the same website you visited before to get and download the data files. So if you could please go to my website, go to that page on the, on the paper, and uh, right click and save on the Natalia data set for 2002. Save the link as, put in that directory in the Natalia data set for 1968. Um, so take a minute or two now and download that into the right directory. They're right here under data sets and files 2 and 4. That's a great question. I, I'm glad you noticed. So the difference between the two files is that a CSV file is called is what's called a comma separated values file. It's good that you noticed that. That's basically, uh, if you think about it in Excel, it's exactly the same as an Excel spreadsheet without all the sort of bells and whistles, what they call field codes. Stata's native data data format, as you I think remember from last time or figured out, is a DTA file. So the difference between CSV and DTA is that you'll have to use one extra step to import a DTA file into Stata and then SATA will convert it to a DTA file. And we're going to cover how to do that right now. What you should also know about CSV files is that they'll also be referred to as sort of flat data files. There are other sort of ways in which they come data formatted, such as tab delimited, space delimited. You don't really need to know what those sort of mean right now, other than to say you have to have one extra step to put into SATA. But SATA is a built-in translator to help you do that. When you download data files from places like ICPSR and other sort of data banks, they'll come in this sort of flatter format sometimes, and you have to do this extra command to import them in. So let's do that. So everybody should open SATA, have it open. The screen should look pretty similar to this. Good memory allocation, Windows all in the right place, and everything else. So because we specify the working directory as the directory into which you just download the comma-separated value sheet, we're going to use a new command today. That command is called insheet. What InSheet does is take what's called the flat file, the Stata file, I mean the common separated values file, and translate it into language that Stata can use. So just like every other command, it's command is InSheet, using, it's just like the use command. Then you're going to type in the file name. We're going to work with the 2002 data set first. So type in the full data name, nat2002.csv. The uh, file suffix .csv is very important. So type that in, then just hit enter. And if you've done it correctly, you should notice that you've loaded in a new data file uh, that has one variable and 40,111 observations. Okay, you look puzzled. Is that because one variable? One variable. This is, we're starting very simple today and working through things. Uh, you got mine it? said that the file wasn't found, but I think it's because it wasn't in my correct. Do I have to actually put it into the folder that 
the QM data or should I just leave it? You should put in the QM data for Okay, so it doesn't automatically pull it from the desktop since we switched it to the That's right. change directory. Thing. That's right. So now that we've opened this into, now that we've imported this data, the important thing to realize is it's not automatically going to stay converted. You have to take that one extra step to make sure it's changed into a DTA file. And all you do there is just save it. So like we did yesterday, type in the save command, name it. I would name it just Natalia 2002 Hit enter. If like me, it already exists, you'll get a message. If not, just hit replace, and you've saved it. So now you no longer have to convert it. You've converted it into proper state of format. And Shaheen for version 9, does that work for you? Actually, it did. When I did the in sheet, it said file not found. Did you download the file and put it in the directory? Yeah. The in sheet using? Yeah, in sheet using, yeah. And it's in my QM data file. She is such an intuitively obvious. That's right. <laughs> so the other thing you can do is just. Um, <laughs> You did download, oh no, you're not in QMD. Oh, you want, oh, you want me to click it. Oh, you know what, it's probably, uh, Should I try it now? No, okay. I, I'm having some trouble, uh, maybe because of my screen issue, but I think I, I, think I got it in the right place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, did I, so, did you in sheet? Are you are you not, are you in the right directory? Uh, I'm not sure. Did you already change your working directory to? I'm sorry. Wherever your working directory is that you downloaded the file into. Um, it just set where it was last week. I haven't okay. changed it. Did you put the CSV data file into the directory you created? Yeah. And is that your working directory? Uh, it's the one we were on last time, so I think it would be. Have you spec? Did you do what I just said at the beginning of? Uh, everything specified it as your working directory? I didn't, um, because I was trying to figure out how to get them in there. Okay, yeah. So just specify it as your working directory, and then try the issue command again. Okay. So while he's pulling it up, you should just know that the, the Natality uh, 2002 data file is basically a data file of taking information off all the birth certificates for the year 2002, recording, uh, for our purposes, the age of the mother at the birth of the child in the year 2002. So what we have here is a 1% random sample of the 100% of all births in the United States, and that means that we still have a very large data file, 40,111 observations. So let's just look at what the characteristics of the data set is. And as you recall, the best way to do that is to use the codebook command. And as you can see here, it sort of, so, sort of shows you the general spread of the data. It shows you the percentiles, the fact that there are no missing uh, variables, that it just had, that every single observation, because it's only one variable, is accounted for here. Things to notice about this data set. The youngest mother to give birth in 2002 was 12. The oldest mother to give birth in 2002, 54. That's an important thing we're going to work with today. And I want you to just notice that those are the minimum, maximum values in the data set. So, anybody still not have it loaded up? Anybody all set? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I just, because I was trying to figure out that, that issue while you were describing these steps. Um, it's, it's just this unrecognized command. Is that on the window? Yeah. Okay. I think the front door is locked. So, is it loaded? No. Can you load the data set? Are you. Show me your friend directly. Oh, you could. You mean there's something different with that, but I'm just loading it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Lesson, remember, just make sure that your the directory you specified matches with or without spaces um, the directory you've created. You have to be very careful about that. that.